Hi guys, it's Chris, back in my cider shed with some more cider to try. And we continue with our Ross and Y delivery and the new uh, bottles, ciders, that were on the palette that I received this last week. Um, and a bit more cheese as well, because I enjoyed having the cheese yesterday with it. And I had some more cheese knocking about, I thought, let's try that. But let's talk about the cider first. So Ross and Y, as already mentioned. There it is, Ross and Y, Yarlington Mill. Yarlington Mill, uh, uh, a varietal that needs little or no introduction. One of the most famous of the British cider varietals, one of my favourite apple cider varietals. What does it say on the bottle? Discovered in 1898 and treasured ever since, Yarlington is a characterful bittersweet apple that bursts with tannin. Matured for over two years so that the tannin could soften and mellow, this is now a gorgeous cider. So Yarlington Mill was found growing out of the side of the mill, in Yarlington, in Somerset, um, and was then put in the gardens, in an orchard in the gardens of the mill, by a man called Harry Masters, famous for Harry Masters' jersey. Uh, we talked about this quite recently. Um, so, yeah, an important guy in the world of apples, because there's at least two apples, cider apples, that he's, uh, he's helped, you know, introduce to the world. Um, this is 6.8%, so reasonably strong, getting up there. It was a 6% yesterday, but then we had an 8.4. No, was it 8.4? We had an 8.4 yesterday the day before. I can't remember. It was bloody strong, basically, anyway. So, that is the cider. What is the cheese? Well, actually, it'd be good to have had the Montgomery's cheddar with this, because Yarlington Mill, Yarlington is a village next door to North Cadbury, and North Cadbury is the home to Montgomery's cheddar. So, literally, I mean, that apple came from almost the same village as Montgomery's cheddar. So, um, what's the cheese? Well, it's quite different, actually. It's a hard cheese. Um, I think I said that I wanted some more, I'd like a little bit more sweetness or richness in the cider to go with the sort of the saltiness in the, in the, in the cheese. But I was looking at something I had in the fridge, uh, I just got, I thought, that's got some sweetness to it. So why don't we bring sweetness to the cheese rather than to the cider and see if that works. So that's what we're going to do. So what's the cheese that's bringing this sweetness? It is this guy, this guy. What is this? This is Parmigiano Reggiano, one of the most famous cheeses of Italy, one of the most famous cheeses in the world. It's quite a nice big chunk, as you can see. Hard cheese. Uh, I don't think you can see on the rind. Upside down, maybe. There we go. Parmigiano Reggiano. It says it around the rind of the cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano. That's what you know. It's the real deal. They get um, they get scored out of, I'm not sure if it's 20, the same as Conte, but they basically get scored on taste and flavour and texture. And if they don't fit the bill, if they don't pass muster, then basically these, these, this writing on the side is Parmigiano Reggiano, which is put on when the cheese is moulded. It's crossed out. They put lines all around to cross it out to say this is not Parmesan. This is a rejected Parmesan. So if you see Parmesan with lines around it and people are saying it's Parmigiano Reggiano, it ain't. It's rejected Parmigiano Reggiano. You shouldn't be paying full, full whack for it. And they shouldn't be selling it as that because that's cheating. Um, so yeah, uh, mountain cheese, alpine, cooked curd, uh, you get some sweetness in it because it's cooked curd, I'm not good at the technicalities of that, but you get sweetness in it, like griers and so forth, parmesans, they're cooked curd cheese, is made in the mountains traditionally, and uh, that's where you get the sweetness from. This one is made, actually, it's a bit lower down, Apennines, sort of poor valley sort of region, um, but the, 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 the recipe, the style was brought down from the mountains by monks to make in the valleys, which is why they're using sort of mountain techniques, but at lower sort of altitudes, if you like. This is by this is from Giorgio Clavero, who is a cheese maturer, fourth generation, one of the nicest men you could ever possibly meet. He is based in Bra, in um, in northern Italy, not in Emilia Romana, which is where Parmigiano Reggiano has to be made, outside of that region. But you're allowed to mature it outside of the region if it's made within the region. And he's the only maturer who's maturing it outside of the region. And I think he only works with four farms out of 360 possible farms ish. Um, because he likes sweet, creamy parmesan. That's what he wants, and he feels there's only a handful of cheesemakers that make it in the way he likes. Okay, so that's a bit of story about parmesan and about this particular parmesan. Okay, uh, there's a number on the side of these cheese which tells you which actual producer made it, but there's no number on the side of this, so I don't know which one it was. No matter, let's put that to one side. It's a bit cold as well, the cheese, which was a bit warmer, never mind. Let's open up this cider and let's give it a whirl. So, not too cold this cider. I've just left it in the shed rather than the fridge. So, it has been pretty chilly in here. Temperature. Um, 10.7 degrees, it says on the thermometer. The thermometer up on the wall. Let's pour it out. 
unfiltered, of course. Ooh, nice colour. Unfiltered, of course. Um, wild yeast, of course. Bottle conditioned, of course. Ooh, it seems very still there. I mean, this is a sparkling cider, I am sure. But it didn't make that much noise. A little bit of a sparkle. Great colour. It's much darker than the um, than the Bulls Bittersweet we had yesterday, and I think than the dab in it as well. There you go, look at that. Nice amber, nice amber colour that. Here's the amber, beautiful looking thing. So let's give it a sniff. Yep, yeah, bit of funk. Aged apple, like I always say, it's like my mum has apple trees and she gets the apples in baskets and she puts them in the shed over winter just because she can't use them all at once. And if you go into the shed, it's got a particular smell of these aging apples. And I get that a lot. From a, from a lot of ciders, certainly the ones I get from Russell White. Bit of funk, bit of that aged apple, but quite a sort of rich baked apple in the background as well. Um, yeah, it's quite a deep nose, this one. It's quite a deep, dark nose. Yeah. Nice hit of funk, though. All right, let's try it. Big tannins, squeaky teeth, soft tannins. Um, hitting the tannins in the back, not so much as there was with the balls bittersweet, I don't think, but bolder tannins on the front. A bit more acidity in this one than the balls bittersweet as well. A bit more of an acid character, but I think it's a bitter sharp, actually. I think it's a bitter sharp. Did it say it on there? Oh, it's bittersweet. I, oh, Kingston Black's the bitter sharp. That was confusing me. That's bittersweet. Okay. Um, yeah. So a bit more acidity. Oh, it's quite nice. Mouth watering. Balances with the um with the tannin, but I'm thinking actually acidity and sweetness, tannin, so then sweetness and, and fattiness should work really well together. That's what I'm thinking. It might work really well this time. Um a bit more. You yeah, can real fun. A bit of dairy as well. Almost like a creaminess, a butteriness, something in there suggested a bit of like fruit and cream, double cream or something like that. Trying to make them think of oh something else as well. What is that? Might be a hint of cheesiness about it as well. Might be my, my mind playing tricks on me. But you do get that sometimes. But you can get bacon sometimes as well. And I don't want it in a bad way, so it's really quite interesting. Yeah, I think there's a hint of cheesiness about it as well. Cool. Bit more uh, bit more in the mouth. There is a sparkle but by gummy it's delicate. It's really delicate. I'm wondering if it's meant to be a bit more sparkling than that. I don't mind, actually. It's quite nice. Just a little bit. I'd rather have too little and too much, for sure. Um, okay. So let's get some of this cheese. You can see some nice crystallisation in this cheese. That's something that happens. Can you see it? I'm not sure if you can or not. A little bit. A little bit. There you go. Right there. See? Crystals. Um, not salt. If that was salt, it would taste very salty indeed. That's tyrosine, which is a protein that um, forms around nucleation point, points as hard cheeses age. And it takes time to get in. I think looking usually minimum 12 months before I start seeing it appear. And you associate it with a quite nice, sweet, crunchy, umami character. It's very nice indeed. Um, all right, let's try a bit of this. I'm just going to do a proper cheesemonger stamp on it. Oh, there you go. That'll do. Hacked it a bit. It's a bit cold and hard. Okay. Yeah. A hint of... Now, people often think, it's like Parmesan, Parmesan is a generic term for cheeses in the style of Parmigiano Reggiano. That's probably what you can call the stuff that's been, you know, etched out on the cheese. Um, and actually, if you get pots of Parmesan in the supermarket, often it's got like a sicky smell. That's butyric acid. Um, and in, in large amounts, it's very much a flaw. You know, I don't, I hate it. It's one of the flaws in cheese that I dislike the most, is that butyric acid thing. You get it in some... Um, sometimes you get it in like a lot of um, sort of sheep cheese as well with a lot of fat in um, sort of which breaks down it's got this butyric character I've had it in a lot of manchegos I've tried uh, sort of some blue cheese as well like Roquefort style I've had it in those as well don't like it very much when I get butyric acid dislike it intensely but there's a tiny 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 hint of it in this and I think that's actually part of the character it should be there but in very small doses I think it's a bit like acet acetic acid um, in cider see I personally don't mind um, Albert and Mike, uh, Ross and I hate it. I personally don't mind a little bit of acetic acid. We don't want too much. It just It's just there to give another dimension. Um, but there is like a buttery, cooked, like a cooked 
um, cooked milk smell to it, and there's been turic character as well, and there's a sweet lactose character to it as well. Anyway, let's try it. Mm. And it's sweet, absolute sweet. And it's melting in my mouth. It's been cut a little while, so the bit off the surface is going to dry than the bit in the middle of the cheese. But it's still melting, it's got a creaminess, it's got a sweetness. Going to get a bit more. There we go. A bit more. Let's have some cheese. It's really good. If you get good parmesan, it ain't just for grating. It's for eating as well. It really is. You can put it on a cheese board and eat it. You really can. It's great. Brilliant with sparkling wines. Brilliant, brilliant with Prosecco. In fact, I'm thinking tomorrow I might bring this bit back down the shed and get some of the, the, um, the uh, Buford Organics or Aurora 2018 which is very sort of Prosecco-like in character, if you like, and try it with a bit of this, because I think that might work amazingly as well, because that's got a real tartness to it, a lemon sherbet acidity, and I think with the sweetness that might work well, so I might do the same cheese tomorrow, but with a different peri that we've had before, but not with this cheese, so that would be cool. Right, one more in the mouth. Try to burn my beard. Yeah, and it works better because there's some sweetness in there. And this isn't quite as tannic, I don't think, as a ball's bit sweet. But it's still bone dry. But I think that sweetness with the dryness, with that bit of acidity, with that leatheriness, is a nice, nice component. Now we should try once more. A bigger bit this time. I'm being a bit stingy with myself. Last bit. Then I'll stop. I'll be gone for 12 minutes for Christ's sake. I think the sweetness brings them in the party. It brings a required, for my part, almost a required element. Just a hint of sweetness somewhere in there. You know? Yeah, really good parmesan. Really good parmesan. It's like fruity, sweet. There's almost like a white chocolate element to it as well. Really like it. Nice one, Giorgio. Nice one. Giorgio Cravera showed me how to cut parmesans in half in Bra. And somebody took a picture of me while I'm doing it. And Giorgio's got it on his office wall. I met him in New York, I hadn't seen him for a while, we just bumped into each, each, into each other at an event sort of thing. And he's like, oh Chris, what are you doing here? He didn't have moved to New York. I said, I live here. He was like, what? And he said, Chris, I look at you every day. I look at you every day. You're on my office wall. He's kind of creepy, actually. But he's such a nice man, I wasn't creeped up for very long. Anyway, that was good. And this Yarnton Mill's good as well. This Yarnton Mill's good as well. I think it's still a bit too cold even though I left it in the shed. It's going to get better and better and better. Okay, guys, thank you for indulging me. In my cheese tasting. Uh, I know you come for the cider tasting. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Everything that's coming off this palette is good, as was predicted by me. But let's see, maybe tomorrow we'll have some thaw some uh, Aurora Perry and some Parmigiano Reggiano. But until then, thank you for joining me and cheers. <laughs>